The 47th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards were on CBS, and the outstanding guest performance in the daytime drama went to Eva LaRue for a role as Celeste on Young and the Restless. I'm BJ Chorus, and we caught up with Eva earlier this month talking about her Emmy nomination. Hey everyone, BJ Corson. This is the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition. We're on the road to the Daytime Emmys and we're catching up today with Daytime Emmy nominated for Outstanding Guest Performance in a Drama for her role as Celeste in Y&R. We're here with Eva. Eva, how are you today? Hi, I'm great. How are you? What's in your mind space and how are you dealing with everything, Eva? Um... It's been a heck of a two months for, for everybody. And then on top of it, um, with uh, losing John and. Right. Gotta be hard. Uh, it's such a, such a multi-dimensional question. Um, <clears throat> Why did the fox cross the road? <laughs> Siri's got her own question for you. <laughs> Why did the fox cross the road? Eva? Alexa, seriously, nobody asked you. <laughs> well, Alexa will do the interview for me. She's I know, right? I mean, that's a first for you, is Alexa, it? stop! <laughs> Go to sleep! Oh my gosh. You've got extra company to keep you with How the creepy. To the soul, right? <laughs> yeah. She's creepy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, um, it is, it's been, um, you know, Kaya, my, our daughter Kaya is graduating today, basically, is her last finals day. Tomorrow, we're going to have a small, like, little socially distanced barbecue in the backyard with just family. So she's mourning the loss of all of that on top of the heavy grieving of losing her dad and, you know, and the possibility, you know, and the fact that he the three of us won't be taking her going to college in the fall right. and um and that she might not get to go to college in the fall she may have to do that online before she can actually go in um january in person so um but it, it's been so interesting to have the entire soap community it, it's it's been incredibly heartwarming to have the entire soap community send forth all of their love. I literally, I heard from every show. I heard from people who'd worked with him and not worked with him. I'd, I heard from everybody. And it just is such a testament to how um, the soap industry is really an extended family. I mean, we all have, you know, there's, there's obviously always been, you know, uh, a crosstown rivalry with a lot of the soap, especially when it comes to the Emmys. But when push comes to shove, man, there's, it's a really, it's a, it's a community where even if you don't know each other personally, you know each other and respect each other. And I, I, I heard from everybody and it was, it was, it was magnificent. It really was so helpful and um, so loving and, and we really, we needed it, okay? And I needed it. Um, I didn't think we needed that, but it was just so beautiful. And to go down memory lane with everybody this last two months, um, it was really incredible, especially to hear everybody's specific favorite storylines or favorite moments or, you know, and things that you forget because when you do eight years off and on on a show, you forget all the storylines or, or we, we also don't know what um, resonates with the watcher. So it, what resonates with one watcher might not resonate with another. And so to hear um, all the supporters and fans of all my children come out, the outpouring of love from all of them saying, you know, I loved this in that storyline and I loved that and I loved watching you two fall in love and I watch, you know, all the things that, and because, because like any couple, you know, when we got divorced, there was that, you know, animosity period for a couple of years where we were straight up you know it, it's funny every time I read in the in the paper they're having an amicable divorce all is fine look the other way it's a they they're just they're going to you know partner be parent partners 
um, happily and, and no, and none of it's happily. Right. Just nobody wants to talk about what's actually going on. But, you know, I just, I, I think um, there's no way to get a divorce without there being animosity. And so the first few years were, you know, contentious. And, but by about year four, something like kind of clicked for us and we went back to being like best friends. Like he was one of my closest friends and confidants. And um, we lived like two and a half hours apart. So it was a bit of a, a hike for him to come here and Kaya to go there. But she, you know, went every other weekend until she was in, high, in junior high pretty much. Um, and then of course, friends and sleepovers and all those things take precedent. But then he started coming up here more often. So he always crashed in my guest room. And um, even when I was married again, he would crash in our guest room and everybody was fine and everybody was friends. And, um, and you know, our favorite thing to do together was to, in the kitchen, he was the most amazing harmonizer, like literally could harmonize to any tune, anywhere. He knew a three-part harmony to, any, you know, he, he always lamented that he wasn't three people to be able to do all three of his own harmonies. <laughs> But we would sing in the kitchen until like the wee hours of the morning together. And, um, and that is my last favorite memory because he was just over the house like two weeks before um, he passed. And um, Kaya had school the next day and her room is kind of near the kitchen. So she came out at like two in the morning and was like, well, you two shut up. <laughs> Stop, I'm trying to sleep. I have school in the morning. And we're like, woo, singing our brains out in the kitchen. So, um, so I'm glad that I, you know. And you know, it's interesting because they say music soothes the soul and heals the soul. And you know how that probably is one of those key elements for you now in healing, because if that's one of your memories that you go back to, mm -hmm. it, does, it does show the, the feeling of how music does have that soothing and healing moment for us in a, time that's difficult and I, I i love the fact that the whole world definitely went through this with you and um you know is still going through it with you i mean i guess it was the main topic too when you and the cast of all my children reunited recently and there were some very special moments even from the cast members there you know i was with um, kelly and mark and um and Sydney Penny on mine. I fell in love with Eva. I remember it really well. It was like, it's like a vivid memory in my mind. And, and um, so I, I spent an inor inordinate amount of time with the two of them to, I mean, to the point where I talk about like a third wheel. It's like, I could, <laughs> I could hear their, I could hear their thought process. Like, are we really taking your little sister out again? I, I think it's, I think it's amazing. I'm so glad they did it. And it, and it, it's such a testament to the fans and how much they still love the show and how people are still interested in it and still love it. And, you know, I grew up a fan of the show because my mom watched and, and, and for me, it keeps it alive. Right. Um, I mean, I had the absolute honor of working on the show, but, um, but I was a, I was a fangirl before that. So, you know, I have, I have a, mine's twofold. I feel like my right. fandom. <laughs> now, now it's interesting because, you know, there's been a lot of buzz back and forth, whether they're going to bring back all my children, either on a video streaming format or to network again. Is there any updates with that? No, I mean, Kelly and I, Kelly Ripa and I have talked about for years um, that, that we would love to see All My Children be the first soap to come back in a new format because the when I started in soaps, there were 15 soaps on the air and now there are four and I, and I think, I mean, this is just my, I'm hazarding a guess, this is just my opinion. But I think that it's because the shows look so antiquated in the way that they're shot, in the way that they're produced, um, which is no, I am not being disparaging of, of the format. It's just that we've come so far, um, you know, in, in our industry aesthetically, what we can do, what, you know, what can be done on a tight budget. And, um, and that everything looks like a feature film now and everything, you know, whether it's on nighttime or not. And I just think 
that one of the reasons that they're falling away is because they, they, you know, but also one of the reasons why they're still fans 50 years later is because there's something nostalgic about the way it's shot. So it's a kind of a double-edged sword. People love the way it looks because that's the way they grew up with it, you know, but at the same time, it's not moving forward in a modern way. And I would love to see all my children be a nighttime soap. Right. I'd love to see it be like a dynasty or like a, yeah. you know, like done like a nighttime soap and in, with real film quality and because who wouldn't love that? I know. And in today's time, I think we're seeing that the audience would love it. I mean, it's really, really it's got a built in audience. You. Right. And it's really, really got to excite you because first of all, yes, you did have nominations for all my children, uh, two of them actually, but to uh, have a nomination for Outstanding Guest Performance in a Drama for your role as Celeste and Weinard this year. But the main thing is, is that it's going back to primetime television on CBS. How is this nomination for you different from past nominations? This one, well, it couldn't have come at a more perfect time. It has been really this beautiful bright spot in this kind of, in this tough period. Um, and there's something so beautifully full circle about it because I was so green when I started All My Children. It was my first big job. And, um, you know, my scene partner for, for eight years was John. Right. You know, for the most part, like I cut my teeth and learned to act with John. And um, so I really feel he's like looking out. It's been like perfectly full circle and beautiful timing. It really has been. Yeah, you've got an angel on your shoulder on this one. Yeah, I feel really, like. How did it feel to you to see and hear Kelly remembering the romance for you guys? Um, that was amazing. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, it was... Um, <clears throat> Kelly Ripa and Mark and um, Sarah Geller, who were with me by phone all day that day when he had a stroke and in the hospital. And all that next week, they literally checked in with me every day, like almost all day. Um, Sarah called me when we were in the hospital. John was already unresponsive and on life support um, when we got there from LA because he had had uh, a stroke and we had, he wasn't answering the phone and he had had some heart procedures done the day before and he wasn't answering the phone. And so I had one of his neighbors go over um, and to knock on the door, I thought he was maybe asleep. And, um, and then I had the neighbor break into the house and then they found him um, and he was already, he was already unconscious. And so they, the paramedics came and got him and took him to the hospital. and. Um, so we raced down there, Kaya and I literally broke all land speed records. Like it takes an hour, it takes two hours and 15 minutes to two and a half hours to get there from our house. We got there in an hour and 45. Wow. That was the best part of the best part of the pandemic was right, that they were right. there in the nick of time um, to see him in the emergency room before they took him to ICU because once he went to ICU, we weren't going to be able to see him. They weren't going to let us in the hospital at all because it, we had been in shutdown for like two weeks at that point. Right. They weren't going to let us in at all. And thank God for all my children because the woman at the front who was waving everybody away and saying, sorry, no one's coming in this hospital was like, your ex-husband just came in. And I said, he did. And, I, and, and she said, we're not allowed to let anybody in the hospital. And I said, we just down here this is his daughter is there any way we can see him and she was like yes come on and she goes i'm a huge fan of both of all my children thank god for all my children we would not have seen him or been able to talk to him before he went he he didn't hear us of course he was already on life support but we were able to talk to him for a half an hour and tell him how much we loved him and play his favorite music sarah called when we were there in emergency and she asked me to put the phone by his by his face so she he could hear her and she just loved on him. And as she was talking to him, he started twitching his feet because he wasn't moving at all. He was out. And so 
he started moving his feet all around and we got really hopeful, like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. He's actually responding to Sarah talking to him. So then Kaya started talking to him about Yankees and, and um, opening day and, the new, and when the season would start. And then he started twitching some more because he's a huge Yankee fan. Right. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, we had about half an hour with him and then they took him up to ICU and then he, he passed later that night is how his heart gave out. So um, it was. Uh... You know, it, there's so many blessings in the respect that you mentioned, and that's the greatest feeling that you know that that moment that you needed the most for you and Kaya, that you literally were able to get into the hospital. We were literally looked out for. Right. All my children has played such a huge part in my life, all, you know from the beginning, from age six, when I first started watching it, to the passing of my, one of my best friends. Um, it's important. Right. Our soap operas are important to us. And it's interesting because when, when you think of the title of even the show, All My yeah. Children, I mean, so befitting because it's like the whole world's, the children and you you've got to nurture them and yeah and we're all connected, we're all connected. And we're finding that right now right in every way what what do you hope today that john is thinking and saying as he's looking down on you and kaya and, and all the love and support that you've given over the years he he always called me evila and so I can almost hear him in my head right now. Like, <laughs> I, I think that he is saying that it's gonna be okay. Like, we're gonna get through the toughest part of this. And Kaya's gonna be okay. And, um, is it, you know, it's just it's going to get better with time it's just this is the this is the worst part of it and that and that he is he's looking out for us and and um but you know it is it is just so interesting to have it all come so full circle at this time like the nomination and the whole thing has been just super beautiful and and i'm and i'm really excited to be nominated with michael knight who is one of his good friends too which is so crazy i texted michael and i said congratulations did you ever think you and i would be in the same category of anything? <laughs> like um probably you know like what are the chances of that right and um and chris shell who's maybe the sweetest girl that ever graced the planet she and we worked together uh we didn't really have scenes together at all my children but she was there when i was there as i was getting ready to leave and um and the other nominees from Young and the Restless, I don't know them personally, but I know of them. I know who they are, but I don't, you know, know them. So I, I just think it's such a fun category and such great actors. And, you know, I told Michael Knight, I said, you know, if you end up taking this prize home, which I think you might be, I just want to babysit her for the weekend. <laughs> I, I love just it. want to dress her up and put her on my mantle <laughs> just for the weekend. Oh, I love that. And I'll give her back, I promise. That's so, that's that's awesome. so funny. I could see you doing this. And you I, I have to say, I know it's always so cliche for people to say, I'm just so happy to be nominated. But truly, I am just so happy to be nominated. Like, this was just, like that. that was the gift for me. The gift was was just having that super bright spot in this last couple of months and and um and something to look forward to in june and and it was exciting for kaya too because kaya was like um you wouldn't have gotten that nomination without me i ran all your lines with you at home i was the one who and i was like you're right you this is like you're right you, this is your nomination as much as mine because you ran all the lines with me and uh um it's funny, even my ex-boyfriend called, because um, we're still great friends, and he, he called and he was like, wait a minute, are the, is this what you got nominated when I sat there and ran lines with you all the time? And I was like, yeah, this is the one. This is Young, this is young and the Restless. So between Kaya and Nick, they both, you know, they both <laughs> schooled me. But the good thing is, you've adopted a new uh, family member at the same time. That's we did. A lot yeah. of joy. 
her name's Callie. It's she's a girl, and she's John's other love besides you know Kaya and um, and she's been really she's been really healing. She's been we've been healing for her. She's been healing for us. But Definitely. that goes that goes hand in hand with your other show that you're hosting for the second season of Chicken Soup for the Souls. I mean, it just goes. It's so befitting. That it is. A it new, really is. A yeah. new family member to help heal your soul so that you can help heal the souls of others when you're working on set. Isn't that true? It's chicken, chicken soup for the souls, animal tales. And who knew that uh, it would hit so close to home? She literally has been a chicken soup for our soul, especially for Kaya and, and us for her. It's been, it, it's so fitting. Yeah, it is. Chicken Soup for the Souls, Animal Tales, and that's on CW. Now, have you heard when the next season's going to hit? No, I haven't heard anything yet. Um, I heard that we got picked up for a third season, which is awesome. Um, but I don't know when we're going to start to shoot it. We normally start in, like, July. Cross your fingers, right? Yeah. This set, this set for you could be very easy because you're pretty much socially distant anyway when right we're filming it you there's very see. few of us on that set anyhow so i think we we actually could probably do this and me still be in studio because there's you know the guys that are in the production booth are in their own booth right. and there's one camera guy one lighting person and a director and a producer right so right. if I know where they've been for two weeks before and they know where I've been for two weeks before, we're kind of good. <laughs> right. And I think that's the key. You said the key element. It's that trust factor and knowing where somebody's been two weeks before and that everybody's keeping it safe. And you could actually probably even do it from home if you needed to, because that look is, you know, kind of chic on, on camera now. Yeah, it is. People are getting used to it. Because of the nomination, they missed you so much on YNR anyway. <laughs> Was there talk that we'd see Celeste come back prior to the COVID state? Um, there hasn't been. Um, it, it was always supposed to be a, um, you know, a two-month arc. Right. And so, um, and I was really excited to do that. And then we didn't, we just kind of left it at that, but at least the character didn't die. Although we all know that that doesn't really matter on a soap opera. You can right. certainly die and come, that's the, the whole point of being on a soap opera. Die or be in a coma or, you know, come back from the dead or you have a twin. But, um, but I didn't die. I just went to Florida. Same. Right. Anything could happen, right? <laughs> anything could happen. Yeah, so anything could happen. Moms needed, though, in some of the situations that's going on on YNR. So, and who knows, you may have to come to town for another wedding somewhere. In yes. The too, yes. Right? Yeah. So I'm open. It would be interesting. It definitely be interesting to see you back. There's a lot of people over there that have been my friends for decades that I've never had a chance to work with. Right. Like, um, like Peter, you know, Peter Bergman and Michelle Stafford. And, you know, there's just like, there's so many people over there that was just, it was a blast. It was really, it was really fun. Well, it's exciting to see that the daytime industry is being nurtured and that on CBS, you're going to be a part of the nominees for the outstanding guest performance in a drama for the role of Celeste in YNR, Young and the Restless. What is that one show or that one role for you that has meant the most to you? It's, it's Maria Santos Gray. It really is. Because there was such <clears throat> a massive story arc. There was so much to chew on as an actor. Right. There was so much to plumb there. And I really loved her. And I loved her journey. And I loved who she fell in love with, obviously, on and off screen. And yeah, that was really. Okay, so what else are we working on? Because you've also got this. That should start airing, I think, in June, at the end of June. Um, we, oh, shot all, we shot those right before we went into quarantine. And other than that, 
we're all shut down, so there's nothing else that I'm that I'm working on. Can you share a little bit about your role in the show. Yeah, it's a departure. Um, I am playing the um, I'm playing the madam of a high class call girl club. I own the club. Right. And it's just, you know, there's a, you know, a, um, it's only like multimillionaires and billionaires and you. So Heidi flies, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and and I own a, a club and the <laughs> men come to the club. And uh, so that's. Did you have fun <laughs> working with Ernie Hudson or did you have some scenes with Ernie? I didn't have any scenes with Ernie. No, but, uh, but I really, I really had fun there. Yeah. yeah. It, everybody loves the show, so that's going to be exciting. And you do have three episodes, so we should see that starting to air soon on yeah. the family business, I hope. And we no. need to thank our guest, Eva LaRue, who's up for outstanding guest performance in a drama for her role as Celeste in Y&R, Young and the Restless. Remember, you can tune in to the Daytime Emmys, first time back on network television, and even they can follow you on social media on Twitter at? Um, on Instagram and Twitter, it's at Eva LaRue. Eva, thanks so much for blessing. Thank you so much. And prayers are out to you. And Thank the you. world is supporting everything you do in this time. And wish Thank you, you all the best. It's been so much fun today here on the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition with Eva LaRue. Once again, this is BJ Chorus with Eva LaRue. And this is The Hollywood Moment. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Hollywood Moment at Home Edition as we're on the road to the Daytime Emmy. Once again, congratulations to Daytime Emmy winning Eva LaRue. You can follow Eva throughout social media at Eva LaRue. And hopefully we'll see her reoccurring on Young and the Restless. You can learn more about Young and the Restless at CBS.com. And if you missed the 47th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards, it's streaming now on CBS All Access. Please learn more about the 47th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards at emmyonline.tv. And please tune in to Celebrity Page Nightly. You can learn more by going to celebritypage.com. Until next time, this is BJ Chorus. Thanks for watching this episode of the Hollywood Moment at Home Edition as we're on the road to the Daytime Emmy congratulating daytime Emmy winning Eva LaRue. If you liked the episode, hit the like button and do subscribe.